Opus 54 No. 2 is one of seven quartets that Haydn wrote in C major. It's one of the most extraordinary pieces that he ever wrote for the medium. And in the first movement, it starts with a kind of fanfare figure in the first violin, great explosion of energy, and then the music just stops. And you wonder what's going to happen next, as usual. And he brings back the same figure, the same kind of fanfare, but in a different key, does exactly the same thing again, it stops. And the third time, it's in an even stranger key. And for many people, the idea of what key is what is a little bit complicated. They don't have a sense of key. But I think this is a, one of the best ways of hearing how it affects the character of the movement. The second movement is one of his really very heavily felt slow movements. When we went to the first Bartok seminar in 1967, which was held in Budapest, um, like everybody else, we gravitated to going to one of the big cafes which have violinists. And what you notice there is that they play in the same manner that Haydn's writing for this quartet. It seems to me, initially, that it's completely wrong when you've got a wonderful tune underneath to almost debase it by improvising in the manner that, that the Hungarian gypsies do. The beginning of the minuet is a magical moment and it's one of those cases where the context that it appears in is all important. If we just play it on its own... Very charming, but the change in emotion from the end of a slow movement to the beginning of that is, is something that, well, in the context of the performance, I hope will, will speak, um, speak itself. After this very gentle minuet, we have one of the most extraordinary trios that Haydn ever wrote. Very, almost barbaric, starting off with unisons in the four instruments, and then hitting this anguished chord, which is what we call a tritone. It's a very unstable kind of chord, which has a very kind of searing quality. And he keeps repeating it over and over again, and eventually brings the cello in as well, with a chord that actually is the, is the first chord of the Tristan sequence. It comes later, prefiguring it by however many years that would be. And it's, it is an astonishing moment in, in the quartet. With the last movement, um, he starts rather unusually with the, a slow introduction. At least one thinks it's going to be a slow introduction. You have this incredible climb, this arpeggio in the cello part. And when I first played this, sight reading it, uh, as it were, my eyes got bigger and bigger as I sort of, as, as the whole arpeggio sort of progressed. I sort of wondered where it was going to end, and it has this. Um, it's just a, just a simple arpeggio, but it it uh, creates this fantastic atmosphere.
Thank you.